Miguel Cali and Murdo's Pawn Shop. Season 2, Episode 24. Death to All Mice. October 11th, 1921. Continued. I hadn't been terrified of dying when I entered the Night Enthusiast Cave to confront Wrath. Scared? Yes. Terrified? No. But when he mentioned putting Noble and I into train cars, I was terrified. It was the perfect threat, because there was no solution. If I was gone, no one would be able to deliver any of us. Death changed suddenly into eternal damnation. I didn't know what the process was like, being put into a wooden train car, but I guessed it was quick. Wrath had done it to five night enthusiasts, and they must not have been able to put up much of a fight. Wrath picked up a wooden train car and eyed me keenly. "'What do you think, Maud? he said. Do you want to be bunkmates with Don Mamungus for all eternity? I needed a rescue. Behind me, Noble, despite the fact that he had a gun, still hadn't shot, and I knew why. He'd only have a handful of bullets in that gun. Wrath was still half made of wood, and it was impossible to know where to aim to hit flesh. Most importantly, there was a very real chance that Noble would hit me instead. So instead of hoping for a miracle bullet to save the day, I took things into my own hands, and created my own rescue, as best I could. I shouted the first thing that popped into my head. Death to all mice! The words from the wall, in the secret basement of McGillicuddyan murders. Death to all mice! I meant the words as a distraction, something to confuse Wrath while Noble got a little closer. I had no idea they would do what they did. At the sound of the phrase, shouted in the darkness of the night enthusiast cave, six figures appeared. They wore opera masks with long noses, no, bird beaks. They were plague masks. I had just been joking about plague masks and now they were standing in front of me. Long, sharp beaks and huge, bulbous eyes. The figures wore capes as well. They stared at Wrath, Noble, and I, in total silence. We stared back. No one should have been able to teleport into this cave. What were they? We were summoned, the bird nearest to us spoke. We just wanted to get out of here alive, I said. You may go, the bird said to me. We have been hoping that Wrath would summon us for some time. Wrath looked petrified, but the figures all bowed to him, like he was worthy of respect. I was still staring when Noble touched my shoulder. My wits sprang back into my body, and Noble and I rushed out of the cave. "'What were they?' I gasped, as Noble and I dashed down the tunnel. "'I've never seen them before,' he said. "'I thought you knew. You summoned them.' "'I just yelled the first weird thing that came into my head,' I said." Noble looked back over his shoulder. Well, whatever they are, they seem to think Wrath is wonderful. And that probably means they're not. We reached the end of the tunnel and scurried up the stairs, desperate to get into the Purgatory Club where we could teleport. Where did you hear that phrase anyway? Noble said. Death to all mice. What are you talking about? I said. It's the red paint in the secret basement of McGillicuddyan murders. The room with the trap door. It's on the walls. Did you never read it? Maud, Noble said. There is no writing on those walls. Well, diary, I think it's time to panic and hide under a blanket, which is precisely what I'm doing. Tomorrow we'll bring new adventures, but tonight I am curled up with you in the living room of McGillicuddyan Murder's secret basement, about to play a game of acting charades with some soon-to-be friends of mine. Noble is still in hiding. I had to tell Mr. McGillicuddy the whole story, pretending that Noble wasn't a part of it. Mr. McGillicuddy, when he heard my story, took a group of magic unusuals over to the Night Enthusiast cave. Mr. McGillicuddy was still unwilling to risk magic unusual lives for Night Enthusiasts, and he didn't want it to turn into a skirmish, but they thought they would at least go and see if there was something they could do. They found the train cars abandoned, with Wrath nowhere in sight. The death to all mice figures were gone, and Mr. McGillicuddy thinks that they took wrath with them. 
Did Wrath go willingly? He left the train cars behind. Either the death to all mice took Wrath against his will, or they suddenly offered him something so much better than the train cars that he abandoned his previous plan. I'm honestly not sure which is worse. The good news is, we grabbed the train cars. The night enthusiasts hadn't yet emerged. We locked them securely in a very nice prison that is, of course, nowhere near here. We don't want the night enthusiasts discovering our hideout. We know where theirs is, they have no idea where ours is, and we want to keep it that way. We are going to try to negotiate a truce once they emerge. And then, of course, keep them, as long as we can. It's a bit of a victory for us, having several of the night enthusiast leaders under our lock and key. The game of acting charades is about to begin, and someone is cooking food for the party. I can smell it. All in all, spirits are very high. People feel like celebrating. Ariana is not permitted out here with us, but as time goes on, maybe I can convince the others to let her join in. I have more empathy for her now than I ever have before. And if there's a way to get her soul back, then I'm going to. For now, she's safe. And if Wrath was telling me the truth, then I'm indebted to him for the fact that Ariana is no longer on the night enthusiast side. I still have questions. Of course I do. Questions seem to be my lot in life. What do the night enthusiasts want me for? They seem to have some awful scheme up their sleeves, something specific, and I don't know what it is. I have no idea what their larger purpose is. They need me to break a spell. I think it's high time I found out what that spell is. I can see writing on the walls of McGillicuddyan murders, and no one else can see it. Death to all mice. Noble had no idea what those beings with the plague masks were. Mr. McGillicuddy, if he knows, made no explanation to me. What have I stumbled into? And could it possibly be worse than the night enthusiasts themselves? If I'm the only one who can see the phrase, death to all mice, then do those beings have something specifically to do with me? I have a lot to figure out. I have a lot to do. Currently, the streets are swarming with people hungry for my blood, or hungry, at the very least, for me to be put behind bars. If I'm to live an effective life as a magic unusual, I'm going to have to find a way to end these false accusations. Whatever it takes, I will find a way. Diary, it is the 11th of October. I bought you in August. I first inked your pages on August 22nd. That is less than three months. Now look at me. It is glorious to be alive. It is glorious to be myself. And it is glorious that things will be dangerous tomorrow. I remain eternally and devotedly yours, Maud. We hope you've enjoyed Season 2, Episode 24, Death to All Mice, of McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop. McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop is written and performed by Minerva Sweeney Wren, all rights reserved. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider taking a moment to share it with your friends. A social media share, Facebook tag, or in-person recommendation do more to market this audio drama than anything Minerva Sweeney Wren can do on her own. She relies on you. Visit MinervaSweeneyWren.com to share the story with other people in need of an adventure. This concludes Season 2 of McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop. Season 3 of McGillicuddy and Murder's Pawn Shop will premiere in January of 2020.